Just having the shortest path is not enough. The car needs to obey it somehow. Now, there are several ways you can do it in practice. First thing that comes to mind is to cover the path in targets and have the car navigate to the nearest one each time using the compass sensor. If these targets are close enough, the problem I showed before goes away. If you like this idea, that's your new homework because I'm going to teach you another approach. We'll generate a corridor around the shortest path like that. So the car from earlier doing the right-hand rule has no choice but to follow it to the destination. Now get ready to go down the corridor of knowledge. Get it? Because we're coding. No, no, no. Gonna code, debug, and have fun. Coding with Radu. Coding with Radu. Gonna prototype and design. Coding with Radu. Coding with Radu. Let's code now. We're going to add the functionality to generate the corridor in the world because we need to have information about how wide the roads are and things like that. So in world JS and then world JS below this generate method from here and implement the method generate corridor. It's going to be a corridor that links again a start and an end point. So start end. And we begin by computing the shortest path between the start and end using the method we implemented before. Now from this path, we are going to get the segments, the consecutive segments that build the path. So let's generate those in this array. We are going to loop starting at one and all the way until the length of the path and add to these segments a new segment with the point from i minus one, so the previous point and the current point, path of i. And to get the corridor, we're gonna wrap these segments in the envelopes. So going here, let's say temporary envelopes because we're gonna unite them later. We remap each segment to an envelope created from this segment using this segment as a skeleton. So each segment is remapped to an envelope using the road width and the road roundness like this. And let's just set the corridor to be these envelopes for now. We still have to do something to them, but let's debug so that we know these things are working at the moment. We're going to draw this corridor below in the draw method here and uh, before drawing the cars so that we don't draw the corridor above the cars. Now we have to check if it exists. Maybe we don't have one. And then looping through all the elements. These are eventually going to be road borders, so segments. I'm going to use this variable name here to loop through the corridor and um, just draw it under context. But both the segments and the envelopes have a draw method, so this is going to stay the same. Now save this file and we have to generate this corridor somewhere. And we'll do that inside of the graph editor. So in our event listener we defined before, we have to check, do we have here a start and end location? And if so, we tell the world to generate the corridor between the start and end locations like this. Now, because the world has a way to display its corridor, we don't need this code at the bottom here anymore. And uh, generating the corridor is done only when we 
press S and E over some points there, so not on every frame. It will be displayed on every frame, but not regenerated on every frame. It's important because generating the corridor is more processor intensive than just figuring out the shortest path. Let's save this and refresh. And now let's press S here and let's go somewhere, maybe just here and press E. And these are now the envelopes. Let's try a few more times, maybe E here. S here, E here, seems to work. But when generating these corridors, we really want to use the car's location and the target location. And the car can be not where the point of the graph is. It can be anywhere, like it's here. And the target can be at a house. So we need to implement a way that the start and end points can be anything along these segments here. And we'll make that work by essentially pressing S and E no matter where the mouse is here, but then projecting the mouse to that segment and that will be the start location. I'll show you. We go back to our graph editor here and we don't need to be hovering over anything anymore. So we can do this. And instead of this hovered here, we can say this mouse, both for this one and for this one. Now, of course, we can't use this point directly. So we need to project it on the graph and actually add it to the graph. It's going to be a little bit work to do, but not horrible. You'll see. Inside of world.js, where we are constructing the corridor, so in the generate corridor method up here, we have to do something to these points before passing them to the shortest path. Let's take first the nearest segment to the mouse click. So we can use here the get nearest segment from the start and looking inside of all the segments from the graph like that. This is going to give us the start segment. And we can do the same thing for the end segment. But using end here. And now we need to project this start point onto the start segment to get a point that is on the graph somehow. We can do a projection using the segments method to project the point like this. Now, this here returns two things. It returns the point and the offset, how far from the start of the segment we are. And I want just to use the point and I don't want to complicate the syntax too much afterwards. So we will destructure this directly to get just a point, And we will refer to this point as proj start. And we can do the same thing for the end, for the target, essentially. And now these two new points that are over some segments in the graph, we need to add them in the graph as actual points and they need to be connected to other points in the graph. So let's do that here, taking the graph points and pushing the projected start and doing the same thing with the projected end. And now the segments we need to define as well. They will be temporary segments after we do this pathfinding here, we don't need to have them there anymore. We should remove them from there. We don't want to alter this graph structure forever. It's just a temporary thing that we need to do right now. So the first one is going to be a segment from the first point of the start segment to the projected start. And then the second one will be from the projected start to the second point of the start segment. 
then we're gonna have the same things going on for the end segment and the projected end point like so and the graph segments also need to know about these temporary segments now I'm going to append them at the end using concat like so and very important here when finding the shortest path we don't use start and end anymore instead we're going to use the projected start and projected end the points that we just added to the graph so that we can have any start and end location on the road now after the shortest path is found we can clean up so let's remove the points that were added and we can do that with the remove point method from the graph let me copy this for proj end and this is everything we need to do really because when removing a point with this method it removes also all the segments that are connected to it so these temporary segments will be removed as a result of this refresh and now if i press s here and e here you can see it doesn't need to be anymore on a point in the graph it can be anywhere like s here e here and my mouse can be anywhere like i can press s here and it's gonna map to this point because that's the nearest point from the projection there is one problem that happens like um, if e is here and s is here you can see this thing we need to also connect the projected start and the projected end if both of them are on the same segment if the start seg is equal to the end seg essentially so i'm just going to go here and um, if they are the same segment i will add to these temporary segments a new segment connecting the projected points like so now save refresh and if you press s here and e here you can see there's no more that problem and everything from before still works but we still need to unite these envelopes to do a polygon union a union on their polygons so let's go back to world.js after we have the envelopes here we are going to generate the segments the road borders let's say segments is equal to polygon union and we are going to take out from the envelopes just their polys because the union method here works only with polygons and let's set the corridor to these segments now save and refresh let's press s here and e here and this is now the corridor and it doesn't have those kind of artifacts where the intersections are so it's good but i want to emphasize it a little bit more so down where we are drawing the corridor here we are going to also pass a color let's make it red and thicker like so save refresh and now when pressing s here and e here it looks better i think the next thing we'll do is close this world project here and now focus on the simulation and make the cars in the simulation respect this corridor let's open main.js and close the other two files so we don't get confused and where we are creating the road borders here we are going to have to do something different so first we need to find where the target is because the corridor will be between the cars like the best car for example 
and the target, wherever that is. So I'm just going to take out the target by looking through the markings like this and taking the marking that is an instance of target like so. And only if the target exists, we are going to take the road borders as the uh, corridor. Otherwise, we just do as we do now and everything is a border. So if there is a target, let's tell the world to generate the corridor between the best car, which has an X and Y, so it's going to work, and the target center, like this. And now the road borders are going to be equal to taking the segments, the corridor, which is the segments, but we have to map them like you see below there, because the code from phase one was working with this kind of structure, not segments that have a P1 and a P2, but an array with two points in it. And now else, we essentially have this thing from here, but we remove the const. Let's close this parenthesis. And um, above here, we need to define road borders and I just set them to nothing because they will be populated here. Now let's save this and open this other index HTML. And it works <laughs> somehow. Maybe this is the obedient car. Those were just mutated ones. I think this is the one that this that we created previously in the playground. I recognize these structures here and it seems to work just fine going all the way from the start location to the target exactly the way we want. I wonder what happens at the end. I guess it just <laughs> starts going back. Let's see. Yeah, it's just going to go back. It doesn't care that the target is there. It just follows the corridor until the end. And there is no end. It's an infinite loop. But this is actually a way to train cars, to get them to be faster or different, because this code also has mutation. And now this one is better than the previous one. This is a different network. It's slightly different because it's doing this fidgeting here. I don't really like the fidgeting, but uh, maybe it has some other components that are useful. So it seems like it is faster than the previous one. And if you think about the racing scenario, then it is better. <laughs> um, so this would win. Yeah. And uh, you might be able to increase the number of cars here. Like this is 100. I think that this code supports even more, like maybe 500. Yeah, seems to be just fine. So in the playground, the number of cars is more limited because there are a lot of crazy things going on in the background and uh, it's using up a lot of uh, CPU. But wow, what is, <laughs> some crazy things are happening here. It kind of looks like a race already. Wow, that one is speeding up. So somehow it's cornering carefully, but then it was really, really speeding up at some point. And now it's not doing it anymore. I wonder what happened. Okay, now it's speeding up again. Interesting behavior from some of these cars. Uh, this one crashed, but it already passed the finish line, so I guess it's it's okay. I'm already thinking about the game, even though it's not yet a game. That's what we're going to do next time. Now for the big challenge. Open the playground using the link in the description and try to design the logic for a racing car instead of this obedient one we have now. You can use as many sensors as you want, and try it on as many scenarios as you can. I've added several there, 
But if you have the world editor we built in phase two, make more of them. It's important to test a lot because you don't know what the track will be on race day. There's a danger your car becomes really good in some specific cases, learning the track basically, but it won't do good in general. So again, remember to test well, and when you're happy with the car, send it over on Discord. Deadline is in May. I'll be done posting tutorials for the racing game around that time, and the live stream will be soon after that. Detailed rules and info about the prizes are on Discord, so check those out and ask if anything is unclear. Thanks for watching and see you guys.